Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. Good to have you with us. Facebook Live and YouTube. We're here every weekday morning when HCC is in session. Live at 10 a.m. Catch our rebroadcast at noon and 5 p.m. on HCC TV. Of course, it is a Monday, but it's an exciting Monday because it's a return to college for many of our students, some of them on campus, if you're in a workforce program, uh, a lot of our academic programs are online right now, at least for the first four weeks because of the COVID issues in our area. But uh, we're gonna get you through it one way or another. Dr. Tony Rayo Sutherland took a little bit of time off last week. She is back with us on this Monday morning. Good to see you, Tony. Good to see you. It was much needed, but I'm so glad to be back. <laughs> Uh, aren't you? You know, I was I was gone for a little bit this summer, and I was glad to be back as well to get back to some normalcy for whatever it is. And you know, we're we're kind of in a new, a brand new semester, and we're still in this pandemic. Absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, like you say, this first four weeks, there may be a question: Well, do I go to class or do I go online or whatever? But I know the instructors, because I'm one of them, are instructed <laughs> to right. tell you if you're going to. That's one of the ways you can find out is, is through your email uh, with the instructors. They will tell you specifically if there's any question about your particular course. Yeah, in rule of thumb, as we mentioned, workforce programs, welding, uh, if you're taking something like, uh, you know, uh, pipe metal fitting or something like that, that's going to meet in person. Truck driving, another example. They've been meeting in person since last summer. They're going to continue to do so following CDC guidelines. But if you're taking English, a science class without a lab, something like that, it's definitely going to be online for the first four weeks. So uh, we're going to get through this. We're going to get our students back to campus, hopefully later on the semester. Yes, we can't wait. <laughs> That's right. So uh, we mentioned we're on HCC TV again, folks, noon and 5 p.m. rebroadcast the show. And you can also find us in social media. Absolutely. Uh, we're on Facebook, of course, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, and just about every place you can go for social media. <laughs> That's right. Okay, Tony, stick around because you'll be interviewing this next guest, uh, Melissa Bruton. She is the program director with the Surgical Technology Program at Coleman College for Health Sciences. Good morning, Melissa. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. Ready um, to be back. Yeah, in your program, one of them that are meeting in person, we're going to talk about it shortly. So we're going to ask you to stand by, grab a cup of coffee. We'll be with you shortly. Dr. Tony will be talking to you about a first of its kind in the state of Texas. Very exciting. Okay, so our first guest is on Music Monday. She's our Music Monday guest. She's a former HCC student, now a singer mariachi singer in somewhat. We've got Virginia still joining us this morning. Virginia, good morning to you. Hi, good morning, Todd. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy hey, it's to be good. here. Yeah, it's good to have you with us. Um, I know you're a former HCC student. Let's get to that. But from what I understand, you've been performing literally all your life since you were a child. Yeah, that's correct. I started very young. I actually started dancing and around 11, 12 years old, that's when I started getting into singing. And Houston was a huge platform for me. I mean, I grew up in, in Houston, Texas, and I had so many advantages with our magnet programs down there that exposed me to getting the best in music education as I could get. As I grew older, I graduated from HSPBA. And then, of course, I proceeded to Houston Community College, which gave, gave me a great opportunity to get my associate's yeah. degree and then transfer because I am a first generation college student. So it definitely facilitated um, my way to go and graduate from four year university. And my time at Houston Community College was great. I actually got to perform at some events that we had at HCC while I was a student. So that was very cool. Oh, that's awesome. Tell us about the style of music you're singing. Was this music you grew up with that influenced you? And um, obviously in the Houston area, it's extremely popular. Yes, mariachi music is extremely popular, especially now that it's being distributed amongst the school system, which was great for me growing yeah. up um, because I had that opportunity to learn what mariachi music really was aside from what you commercially hear. When I was exposed to that, then I had the great opportunity to perform and have um, actually be mentored by one of the best mariachis in the world, which is Mariachi Vargas de Tecalitlan. And from there, that's where my love for mariachi music uh, began. 
And I knew that I wanted to continue singing this style of music the rest of my life. Being that I am Mexican-American, I was born in Mexico and I grew up in Houston. You know, you grow up very bicultural. So you grow up remembering where you come from, but also living in the present, which is what you're living in the United States. So for me, as I grew older, I knew that my identity was kind of a fusion between the two, which is what I do now with my single that we've put out and what the music that will be coming out in the future is. It's pretty much my identity, the biculture of me, the Mexican-American heritage that I carry with me. Well, you know, it, it right before the pandemic hit, I saw a, um, um, a biography on Linda Ronstadt. And it talked about Linda, um, her father, his Hispanic, and he used to sing mariachi songs to her. And she went to her record company one day and she said, you know what? She was hugely popular, of course. She said, I want to make a a mariachi traditional um, album. And they said, you're crazy. You're at the height (laughs) of your career. This isn't going to work. And you know what? She did it. It became a top, one of the biggest selling albums of all time. She did a tour. It was huge and it became one of the biggest albums of her career just goes to show you how popular that style of music not just here in texas but around the country yes it's amazing that you know that because that was actually one of her best selling albums yes. and um i think it paved the way for people like me you know i like i said i was born in mexico and i grew up in the us so you grew up with these two different cultures and i was very lucky to be able to merge the two. And it just goes to show that mariachi music is internationally known and internationally loved. Um, So that was, that was a great album and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I remember hearing that album when I was very, very young. And a lot of those songs really were, they, they marked a path in my career and there were just songs that you needed to learn and needed to sing. You've got a, uh, you produced a single and you've got a video. Um, It's called May Aganas, aganaste, is that correct? Enganaste, yes. Tell us a bit about that, and I understand you're going to play it for us. Yes. Um, well, we can go ahead and play the, the song, and then I'll tell you guys a little bit about okay. it after my journey with this amazing single. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Virginia Still. Thank you. Mejor ya no digas nada Que hasta tu voz me lastima No te atrevas otra vez A pedirme perdón El dolor se me puede volver Rencor No estaba enamorada Que tus besos iban a ser solo míos Has tirado a la basura todo lo que yo te di Por vivir una aventura se acabó todo por ti Me engañaste cuando yo solo te amaba Me entregué a ti por completo Dime si algo te faltaba No tienes ninguna excusa para cubrir tu traición Así que no digas nada Virginia still incredible. It's at, it's it's a wonderful song. It's called Me Aganyaste. Maybe you can tell us a bit about it. Yes. Um, this song is that was a little bit of the of the single. Um, this song is called Me Engañaste, and it it just talks about the feeling of when someone betrays you, right? Which is something right. that happens to everyone. And I really can appreciate a song when it connects so much emotionally because after all, that's what music does it's intended to move people and ever since the single was put out 
It's actually connected with so many people. I have so many people writing me and telling me, hey, this is the story of my life. So it's just amazing to be um, living that and experiencing that with someone that something that creatively came from me. This song was produced. I actually went to Mexico to produce this song and the video was filmed in Mexico City. Um, it was done with one of the top uh, video directors mm -hmm. in Mexico right now. The producers are Latin, Latin award winning producers and songwriters. And it's just really been an incredible experience. We are surpassing about 100,000 streams on Spotify right now. And we just cleared the 150,000 views on YouTube. So it's incredible that it's connecting with people so well and it's and it's doing so much. Well, it, I, I, it, it's a wonderful song and the direct translation, if I could get it, is you used me, right? Is that similar? similar? Yeah, it's like you betrayed yeah. me. I gave right. you everything and you betrayed me. So it's, yeah. it's very, it's a very heartfelt song. It touches, you know, it touches a lot of folks, I imagine. That's why it has that connection. Yeah, I, I feel that it, it just takes them back to a point. It doesn't necessarily have to be about love. You know, this sure. betrayal can happen in, in, in so many different aspects of your life. And in regional Mexican music, it's very known that the words to songs can hit you so directly. So for me, being that this song is very clear, it's very conscious, it's very direct, and it's resonating with so many people, I just feel so grateful and fortunate that it's being taken where it is and, and it's doing as much as it's doing. Um, Virginia, do you find yourself traveling back and forth from Mexico with your music and your career? Is that something you do quite often? Yes, traveling is definitely something that's a common thing for me. Yeah. Um, I do have a lot of my team is kind of scattered throughout Mexico and the U.S. I'm currently in Miami, Florida. I'm actually doing a promo run for this single, which has been great, you know, despite of the COVID restrictions that we have going on. Um, it's been it's been great for me. I've been doing the major, major networks here in Miami and radio, and it's just been it's been awesome. I've been doing as much as I can even with the pandemic, but it's it's still been great for me. Uh, is there a chance that people can catch you live in Houston sometime or uh, are you going to be going on a tour? Yes, we're actually thinking of expanding the promo tour for the single since it's it's really doing greatness across all the digital music platforms and on YouTube. Uh, we're just kind of hoping that this settles down a bit or see what other regulations are going to happen with with COVID, but we do have planned to, of course, do a Texas promo tour going to uh, New York and California. And I'm actually next week going back to Mexico to record my next single. So I'm doing that simultaneously and trying to just promote and get out there as much as I can, despite COVID. You know, it's it's a little bit risky with the shows right now, but yeah. Some of the some of the shows and everything that's coming up, we do see them in sight. We just have to see what happens. You know, we want people to be healthy and and safety first, of course, throughout everything where, that we've been experiencing. Virginia, where can people find you on the web? Uh, and your YouTube, I imagine, do you have a YouTube channel? Where can they get catch up with you? Yes, I all my official uh, digital platforms are Virginia still. The video is on YouTube. My YouTube channel is Virginia Still. My Instagram is Virginia Still. Everything's Virginia right. Still. Just how you see it um, on the screen. And I would love to invite people to check out my video, to listen to my song, uh, to write me on social media. You know, I love hearing stories from followers that hear the song and connect with the lyrics and with the story that it is. So you can find me on there. We're going to put your your social media handles in the social media posts for this show so uh, folks can check out your music. We wish you the best of luck. The single is called Me Eganaste, and yes. uh, Virginia still is the performer. Remember, folks, you're watching her here and up to the minute. It's the first time you're seeing her. You're going to see more of her. Just remember, you saw her first here on Up to the Minute in the morning. Thanks for joining us, Virginia. Continued success to you, for you, and stay safe. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. We are going to turn things over. Great guest for our Music Monday, Tony. We're going to turn Absolutely. things over to Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Beautiful voice. Yeah. Beautiful it's, voice. You know, it's always wonderful to see our students doing well. And she's oh, a fine example. Woo. Love to do a student success story on her in the future. Hint, absolutely. Hint. So we'll, we'll see if we can catch up with that. Maybe we can turn this interview into a student success story. Wonderful <laughs> stuff. All right. We're going to move on to uh, Melissa Bruton and Tony, you're going to take it away. Brand new program out at Coleman. Looking forward to hearing about this. It's a first of its kind. 
Absolutely. Um, uh, Melissa Bruton, she's the program director for the Surgical Technology Program at Coleman Colleges for Health Sciences. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Uh, that was a great entry listening to that beautiful music. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So beautiful. Well, um, you have or we have a new program, uh, the endoscopy program at Coleman. It's brand new. Uh, tell me how it got started. And for those who may not know what endoscopy is, can you tell us what that is? Yes. So uh, MD Anderson, uh, Dr. Raju came to Houston Community College and talked to Dr. Nicotera, the president of the college, about this endoscopy program. And endoscopy are those procedures where colonoscopies for colon health and uh, esophago-gastroduodenoscopy, also known as EJ EGDs, to look into the stomach to see for stomach problems in those areas. And bronchoscopies look in the lungs. So it's, endoscopy is um, those type of procedures. And in the past, the endoscopy technicians um, had no certificate or no validation of their career. And so Dr. Raju took it under his um, control and came to the college and along with other uh, practitioners coming to the college and telling them that they wanted to start this program. And that's been going on probably for um, six or seven years now. Um, but they've been coming to these meetings weekly in the beginning and getting this program going and getting the curriculum together to, to show. And it is the very first one in Texas to offer this program. And we are very blessed because we're right here in the medical center with all the fabulous hospitals, um, MD Anderson, Methodist, Memorial Hermann, St. Luke's, TCH, all of those hospitals, HCA, we're right in the heart of everything. So uh, why is it so important right now that this program uh, gets started? I know everybody's passionate about it. And doesn't someone, I mean, I, I can't imagine that there was no certificate before because aren't they putting a camera in a person and that kind of thing? Well, that sounds pretty, uh, pretty high level. <laughs> it is pretty intense. Um, I used to do it 30 years ago. And I would think back when I was 30 years ago, I was thinking, man, there should be something like a registration, a certificate or something um, showing that I have the skill and that I have the knowledge that I had. And um, with HCC coming together with the industry and creating this, it gets validation of their career. Uh, we have endoscopy technicians coming back to Houston Community College to get the further education of the anatomy uh, the biologies, um, the practicums, and it will show them their certificate that they've achieved. And they'll be able to take that to their employers, which will be uh, hopefully change it to where more endoscopy technicians will have this degree or certificate. That's wonderful. And I understand that you also want to accomplish a, a program where it's uh, a special group for this particular area. Well, I would like to see the, the students come together and make a professional organization for themselves. Um, I'm also, I also am over the surgical technology program, and we have a professional organization. Nursing has a professional organization. Sterile processing, which I'm also over, has a, their own professional organization. So I would like to see the endoscopy technicians come together and create their own personal their own professional organization where they can share, uh, collaborate, uh, and work together and, and let the others know of the different jobs that are out there because right now it's an exciting time in healthcare for uh, positions. It's also um, a little nerve wracking too with the wonderful COVID virus that we're all having to deal with, but we are moving on and all of, all of the workforce in the allied health are currently um, in the hospitals, doing their doing what they do, learning what they need to learn. So, what exactly in this program do students get out of, of coming to Coleman? Well, very fortunate to be in the heart of the Texas Medical Center, and they will end up with a certificate in the end of completion for Houston Community College, recognizing their educational and their efforts. 
And what about the employment opportunities? It sounds like there must be a lot. How is that? Well, with me, my other two programs, the Surge Tech and the Sterile Processing Program, the clinical sites that they go to, they're usually absorbed in those sites. Um, I know there's a lot of jobs out there for the endoscopy technicians, and I look for the same thing to happen to them to be absorbed into those uh, facilities. Melissa, I've got a question if I could jump in, um, and sure. it's related to COVID. I know medical frontline workers are overworked right now. The numbers are dwindling because a lot of them took off this year because they made so much money last year. Has there, yeah. there been more of a demand for your students to get out there and working because there's a need more than ever, it seems like, for medical workers. Well, in the in the past, prior to, um, the employers would wait till the students obtained their certificate uh, for surgical technology. And at this point, some employers are uh, hiring them without that. And once they get it, or they may give them like six months to complete that um, certificate. So it gives them a little bit of an in the door quicker. And I think they're doing the same thing for nursing as well um, as the other areas. But I know in some hospitals, even uh, at Houston Methodist, one of the hospitals, they never hired what's called a C1 or a, a right out of school student. But due to COVID and the numbers into our students' performance out there, they have open that position up for the new graduates. And they're actually trying to hire uh, two of ours right currently. That so it sounds like that the demand is there more than ever, really, yes. as we, and because, you know, people, would, we all thought we'd kind of be past this where we are right now, but it seems like we're back at the beginning of it. What's your take on, on what's going on? We're moving into uncharted waters again um, with this COVID thing. I think that um, we all wearing masks. Uh, we've been in surgery. That's what we do is we wear sure. masks anyway. So it's not much of a change except for now when we go into uh, out of the operating room, we don't get to take off our masks. We get to wear them all day. Um, so I think that it, we are, I don't want to say we're well prepared. I think we have sure. the proper PPE. Um, we have the vaccines available to us. Um, I think with that, we're doing well. I, I know that people are overworked in those areas. And I think that the college produces more people to help in those areas uh, for those that uh, decide they, you know, too exhausted or want to retire or for whatever. We're replacing those uh, individuals and also, also adding more hands on our hands on deck. Absolutely. Uh, Melissa Bruton, we appreciate your being with us on the show and telling us about this first in Texas endoscopy program where you can get a certificate. Thanks for being here. Stay safe. It's good to hear your students are, are on campus and, and uh, working out there at Coleman. Yes, they come tonight or tomorrow night at 4.30. So we're really excited to start that. Absolutely. A wonderful thing. <laughs> We'll put some information on your program in the right. social media post for the right. show. Thanks for being here. Thank you. All right, Tony, um, once again, a first in Texas, but you know, Coleman seems like they're always leading the way in first you know, with, with the education you get there. You know, it's going to go national and, and maybe, you know, worldwide. I mean, this, the, yes, they're always on the cutting edge. Absolutely. Okay. One thing we're on the cutting edge as well saves you money. Recognize that phrase. You know the man. You love him. We'll he's save Houston. you money. money. Yeah, he's a Houston <laughs> hometown hero. Well, Mattress Mac, uh, Jim McInvale, has a partnership with HCC's Northwest Center for Entrepreneur. On, try saying this again. Entrepreneurship. They have a partnership with Mattress Mac. It's the Mattress Mac School of Selling, and it's got the final free virtual sessions this week, uh, 10 a.m. to noon, Tuesday, August 24th. It's called Building a Book of Business, and 10 a.m. to noon, August 26th, What You Learn After You Know It All. All right? You think you know it all? <laughs> Check in with Mattress Mac. He'll teach you more. We'll have the link to those events in the social media post for the show. And uh, August Community Learning is continuing this month as well, Tony. 
Yes, if you want to know what to do with soils and compost, <laughs> you can find out it's better living for Texans. Uh, it, it helps you understand how to be a better gardener. And that's important nowadays because, you know, you can raise your own uh, tomatoes and vegetables and things like that. So learning about soils and compost is very important. And uh, we're going to have it Thursday, August 26th from 11 to 1230. And you go to hccs.edu slash community dash learning. Okay, I want to skip on down to three ways to learn in four weeks because this is very important. Vice Chancellors Dr. Norma Perez and Dr. Shante Grays are sharing three different ways they can learn. You can learn how their courses will work for the start of the fall semester. You got questions? This is where you go now that we are in remote mode for four weeks. Number one, check your student center at myeagle.hccs.edu. That's number one. Uh, go to the student sign in title to manage classes we'll have some information on that page. Number two, check Canvas Learning Management System, okay? Once again, go to myeagle.hccs.edu for more on that. And number three, make sure to check your student emails. Make sure you do that because um, I know you may just blow on by them, but you may have an email from your professor or your Absolutely. instructor. Yeah, I mean, Tony may be emailing. You don't want to, you don't want to just ignore Tony's emails. I did email my students. Okay, so there you go. If you want, if you're one of Dr. Tony's students, make sure you check your email. So those are three ways that you can keep up with what's going on. Look, we know this is challenging for everyone. We're doing what we can to keep everybody safe. And with the COVID cases, the best decision was to go online for the first four weeks. We're going to evaluate things on a weekly basis. So you'll get to be getting more communications from our chancellor and vice chancellors and administration, letting you know the status. But the first four weeks for most classes are remote. Of course, the workforce classes are meeting in person on campus. Check with your instructor for more. If you need to register for the fall, well, guess what? Fall begins today, but you can still register for second start. And if you hurry up, you can still register for fall just for today. Go to hccs.edu slash now for all your registration needs. Tomorrow on the show, Tony, we got some special guests, including one of our presidents. Yes, we have a back to class tradition that we're going to start right here on Up to the Minute. It'll be the presidential tour. So Dr. Siddiqui from Central College will be starting that for us. And a Houston Montrose Institution legendary Al's Quick Stop in the Montrose area. They make some fantastic uh, Mediterranean food. We are going to talk with the owner and chef tomorrow on the show. All right. Thanks for joining us. Tony, you're back tomorrow. Absolutely. Okay. I'm back. She's back. We'll hope all of you will be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. right here and live for Up to the Minute. 